Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration with your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day seven of the Past Masters series, volume two. The um, painting I did a study after today is one I've done. Well, I think there's only one video on YouTube, but I have painted it twice. Uh, it's called Summertime by John Francis Murphy, one of the giants of tonalism. And um, uh, I did it twice before because I had recorded a video and then discovered that it didn't actually record. So I guess I thought I was recording a video, but it wasn't. And I thought it was such a... A cool painting that uh, I really wanted to share it with you back then so I did it again so if you dig around I mean if you're interested I mean uh, you can find the 5x7 study I think all you really would have to do is type uh, go to my channel there's a little search box uh, type summertime in there and uh, actually it's a good tip for anything you might be looking for in any channel in YouTube but uh, there's a specific artist I've covered that you're interested in, and in some cases, there's a few that um, you know I've, I haven't done enough to justify a full playlist. So uh, that's a good way to get in any of those guys. But uh, anyway, uh, today is Saturday, July seventh, two thousand and eighteen, and I'm trying to remember to put the year in these things because it's starting to be quite a lot of them. So. Um, I mean, I, I can usually ga gauge uh, when a video would be just from the painting uh, itself. Generally, I can tell um, just from my progression in ability or things like the brown, um, the brown background color that I'm painting on or things like that. But, um, you know, just make it easy for the um, curators of the future our robot overlords that will hopefully love artwork yes and be interested in I don't know curating things like YouTube videos uh, which is you know what I use it for basically it's kind of a sort of studio it acts almost it acts as multiple things one it it gives people interested in watching uh, my painting process something to watch uh, it also gives me a little kind of studio of journal since I tend to talk about what's happening in the studio. And, um, I don't know, you know, there it is. It's something cool. I think it's cool. I, I was always very fascinated and, uh, you, you know, if you're old like I am, you'll appreciate being able to see an artist just do a painting, you know, unlimited amounts of that. Um, but when I was a kid, you really only had Bob Ross, and he wasn't on all the time. And I mean, a lot of the paintings I thought were totally, I don't mind. Some, Bob Ross has done some okay paintings, but, you know, I didn't get many opportunities to see the absolute coolest stuff being done, you know. And uh, that's a wonderful thing about the modern world. Yeah. Um, so I was in the studio today. I wouldn't say it was a super fruitful day. Uh, for some little uh, figurative type studies. Sorry for the uh, glitch in the video there. I just noticed it was a, it uh, looks like, um, oh, I probably have the camera on a uh, tripod. It looks like I probably hit it with my chair. Um, I'm hoping in the new studio to set up something, maybe even that comes down from the ceiling. I don't know if I can, we'll see. Uh, there's got to be a way to uh, to have that camera come down from the ceiling, so I'll never ever hit it again. But um, it happens, you know. Looks like you missed a bit of my darks going in on the trees and the tan going in on the land. But don't worry, there's plenty of painting here. And um, yeah, sorry about that. It happens, and trust me, you know, it probably bugs me a lot more than it bugs you since I'm a um, recovering perfectionist. <laughs> the recovering part is, uh, is questionable, I guess, but uh, you definitely don't like to completely own the uh, term or title perfectionist, but 
you know I have been called that and uh, yeah with with some reason I will say I, I definitely like uh, well and I have to be pretty satisfied I mean in general I'd say about 95% of what I do ends up getting recorded so that's good um, what happened in the studio today other than some board prep uh, yeah I took a painting out on the curb and I stomped on it it kind of hurt my foot too but uh I kept it was the third attempt on this painting uh, trying to save it and you know the sad bit is is that the 5 by 7 came out pretty good and actually I did a little revision on that 5 by 7 I know it sold but uh, this uh, it was a 8 by 10 and I cut it to an 8 by 8 that didn't save it and I did a little more painting on it that didn't save it and then I tried doing a bunch of glazing uh, couple days ago that didn't save it and I was just looking at it looking at it thinking well what else can I do to this when the, 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 the realization came to me that there was nothing I could do to it I thought well maybe I could sometimes I give some paintings to the manager there at the quarry to give to friends of the quarry people that help the uh, help the quarry out um, but uh, I the thought of this painting surviving my death <laughs> it wasn't a good feeling so I, I destroyed it I got rid of it not that everything that's gonna survive my death has got to be absolutely great it just has to hit a certain standard and uh, this painting was I don't know was at odds with itself I think well, I think the main problem it had was the trees too far from the top of the painting which isn't always a problem. You can see it looks fine in this um, Francis Murphy study we're doing here. Those look just fine where they are, you know. They're nowhere near the top of the painting. And I'm not saying trees have to be close to the top of the painting, but some trees, they just don't look right if there's too much space there. I guess that's all I can say. That was one problem. The other problem was I tried to go in with this strong blue glaze but the board was very slick it was from my non-textured era it just wasn't really working out and I tried a lot of my um, my patented techniques for saving failing paintings and uh, I hate to say it but it just nothing worked and then uh, it wasn't the most awful thing I ever did but it was not not good and finally I decided you know what I don't want to look at this effing painting anymore I'm just gonna stomp on it and why do I stomp on them well because if I just throw this thing in the trash there's people there to dig through the trash someone go oh nice painting you know and then that painting will resurface at some point I don't know I don't want that so like I said I've talked about this on the channel before <clears throat> there's a couple a year or maybe it's been a long time since I've done that and it was on a pine panel as well which yeah, I don't care about saving that it's not an expensive piece of wood I just had bad mojo all the way around so I destroyed the painting I annihilated it and it's gone now um yeah, board prep. Did a little glazing on another painting. This, the other one I did a little extra glazing on, was a failed painting that I did manage to, to improve dramatically uh, with a big glaze job. But today I decided to set the lightest tones into kind of a pure yellow. And I think that worked fine. I've been think, sitting there looking at it and thinking about it for a while. And that's one of my techniques. I have a little drawing area. Um, in my studio where I let things sit for a while and uh, a lot of times I'm having coffee in the morning talking to my friend uh, Joe I'll be looking at things and thinking about things and noticing things that are not perfect or could be improved and uh, kind of taking a mental inventory and uh, time will come around I'll fix them up and I think that's a good uh, thing to do uh, give your painting a little time to breathe uh, before you go in there uh, with a second and third pass and uh, well, I guess the last thing I say is I did some liquiding on some paintings are done because I'm trying to get some things together to do some photography and uh, I think real soon uh, we're gonna have to get I'm gonna have to get into the past masters or 
um, you know, we'll run out of past masters and you guys will be jonesing for your master studies, you know, so, um, we'll see how I do with that. Uh, that is always fun, but it cuts into, since I really got to find a way to sell some of these, I guess. Um, if you have an interest in buying one, just, uh, go to my website. There's, uh, a way to contact me there via me email. Let me know what study you're interested in. And, uh, your friend of the channel and uh, I'll make you a deal how about that anyway thanks for joining me today new subscribers thank you for uh, subscribing and old subscribers thank you for sticking with me um, if you do subscribe uh, be sure to click the little bell or if you are subscribed click the little bell so you know when I do a painting um, I'll be back real soon with another painting maybe even tomorrow we'll see it's Saturday today so I'm a little ahead meanwhile take good care and stay out of trouble